We've arranged to meet the guides at uh, 2.40, so uh, 20 to 3, 2.40. Uh, and then the guided tour will take approximately uh, an hour, uh, so approximately one hour, um, before we then uh, meet back with Carl and jumping back on the bus to continue on to the military cemetery, which isn't too far from, uh, from where we are departing from. So the, uh, there'll be two guides that we're going to meet at 2.40. Um, uh, once again, you know, if you, if you want to spend the whole time, um, you know, just enjoying the, the, the centre by yourself and making your own explorations, don't feel you need to come with the guide. Um, but it is, it is included. It's a nice, uh, nice optional, uh, a nice chance for you to, to see um, some of the sites with the guide to... is quite good on these ones. Um, if it does get a little bit fuzzy, that means you're a little bit too far away from the guide. Um, not so much today, but in, when we go to some of the tours where you're going through castles and whatnot, if you're going through big uh, stone archways or around the corner, sometimes that can cut it out a little bit. So you just have to catch up with the, with the groups. The guide usually has a, a spare device with them as well, so if you have any issues, you just uh, report it to them. The uh, the charging docking stations, uh, as I say, are, are in your staterooms, uh, so just make sure you've got uh, a little box with two holes in it, and you pop the uh, the charger, the, you pop the device into the slot, and it'll come up amber, and that means it's charging, and when it comes on green, that means it's fully charged, and again, you can see the, um, the, the, the battery level at the side there. So we'll keep them off for the moment and we'll turn them on just as we get into Luxembourg before we get off the bus um, and then I'll guide you up to the main square before you have your period of free time. Just uh, and uh, on the list of Luxembourg is number two. Most of that comes from uh, banking and uh, the steel industry which was big over here. But it's uh, the city, the topography of the city, it's characterised by its uh, green river valleys and they cross, can cross over a lot of those by well over a hundred bridges providing links between the, the historic and modern parts of the city. You'll see a little bit of that in the centre today. to, to make, take the benefits of it, so um, for like uh, gasoline and alcohol and cigarettes, a lot of the people will cross over the borders into Luxembourg to make their purchases, because it's, uh, it's a lot cheaper than it is in France or Germany. But even though the tax is, a, is less, there's a lot more people that, that, that pay the tax, it kind of balances itself out from that aspect. Well, the, um, the population-wise is uh, approximately 100,000 inhabitants there. 120,000 if you include the outer suburbs. And quite not that many of them are locals. Over 60% of, uh, of, of that uh, population are, are foreigners um, coming in for the uh, sort of business reasons. A lot of companies have based themselves in Luxembourg, which is why a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of foreign um, outsiders have come in to make Luxembourg their home. One of the main, you will find that the majority of people there speak uh, English, but they do have their own language, uh, Luxembourgish, as, uh, as the official language. Um, but English, German, French are all very, very, very commonly spoken. You'll find you learn all of those uh, in your school years.
European Union. And uh, after Malta, it's the uh, the second smallest member of state of today's European Union. Uh, but nevertheless, it was uh, present at the birth of uh, United Europe, and along with uh, Belgium, Germany, France, Italy, and the Netherlands, um, it was one of the um, signatories of the Treaty of Rome in 1957. And the ensuing creation of the, the European Economic Community uh, formed the nucleus for the, the later EU. And, uh, the city itself enjoys equal rights with uh, Brussels and Strasbourg as one of the three official EU capitals. Very influential place, power and money. As I mentioned, one of the main industries there is, is steel. Um, in 1952, it was the foreign ministers of the first European community, uh, the coal and steel community. Um, they chose Luxembourg as their uh, provisional headquarters. So that's where all our money comes from. So as um, Luxembourg has a ha quite a, a stable high income economy, um, the result of this is low unemployment rates and low inflation. So as I said, uh, it's quite heavily dependent on that international trade. And it's, uh, the economy is based mainly around the banking, insurance, telecommunications, and as I mentioned, the steel, which uh, dominates the industrial sector. Although they are diversifying, including um, products such as uh, rubber and chemicals, but steel is the main one. But since the 1970s, uh, the constant growth of the, the financial and the banking sector, that's kind of balanced out the decline of the, uh, the, the, the steel. So even if one goes down, the other's, the other's gone up. But even though it is one of the richest countries in Europe, bear in mind it's also one of the most expensive so unless you're buying, as I mentioned, uh, gasoline, cigarettes or alcohol, <laughs> everything else is uh, a little bit pricey. <coughs> to give you a bit of a, a comparison, say, um, roughly, roughly income for a, for a bus driver, um, say in Portugal, they would earn about 600 euros a month, whereas in Luxembourg, uh, same job, you'd get between three to three and a half thousand. So you can see it's a big difference, but with the, the high wages need to compensate for the high living costs. And it is also part of the, uh, the Schengen area. Um, the Schengen Agreement um, led to the creation of uh, the Europe's borderless Schengen area, so it's, you don't need to do passport control when you go over your borders here, it's free travel. We must be getting close to the, to the border. Oh, I think we've just crossed it, we've just crossed it, we've just crossed it. So we're now in Luxembourg. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> So yeah, it's free, uh, free reign of travel um, around Europe as part of the European Union. And of course, you've all seen the uh, the flag um, dotted around. It's the uh, azure blue flag, which consists of a circle of 12 yellow stars. And that's the emblem of the, the, the Council of Europe and the uh, European Union. It's, used to, uh, it's also often used to indicate Eurozone countries. Uh, more loosely to represent the, the continent of Europe or the countries of Europe. The number of stars, they don't vary according to the members, so if we get a new member, it doesn't get an extra star. Um, it just stays with the, uh, with the original 12. And to give you the, uh, the official symbolic description, Against the blue sky of the Western world, the stars represent the peoples of Europe 
in a circle, a symbol of unity. Their numbers shall invariably set a 12, the symbol of completeness and perfection. So that's the story of it. And just like the 12 signs of the zodiac represent the whole universe, the 12 gold stars stand for all the peoples of Europe, including those who cannot or will not take part in the EU project. Obviously a lot of debate around that at the moment, with the, the UK's current situation. Well, we won't go there. I used to take him walking. And at one time we went down to the Rumal's Lane to look at the pool. So we're just about to come into the, the centre in the next few minutes, and then um, within the next 10 minutes we should be ready to uh, to jump off the, uh, the motor coach. So again, if you want to leave anything on the bus, uh, you can do so. Uh, will be on the same bus coming back again and Carl will be with it at all times so just taking what you do need um, and then you can leave anything else you want on board. 
I will uh, let you know just a couple of minutes before we arrive, just to turn on your quiet box. But um, then we just make ourselves prepared so we can get off the coach nice and quickly. And then we'll get you up to the main square, which is just a few minutes of walk. It's quite flat, don't worry. So remember, if you do wish to join the guided tour at the moment, 40, so 20 minutes to 4, 3.40. And that's where we get off the bus, is where we're going to get back on the bus in that area just there. I will be there, so you can look for me, me in the, uh, in the red sure t-shirt. I might even stick on my red hat as well to make myself even more visible. But please, 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 because uh, again, the uh, the drivers can only stop.